Greetings everyone. It has been a little bit, but I'm back. And this is my latest Vintage Blade restoration. This is a 3 ram Chinese cleaver. It is the number one size cleaver and compare it to my much loved but much smaller number three. Um, the number three has been in my regular arsenal for some time now and is uh, uh, just fantastic steel, takes a great edge, works great, is very durable. And um, these two cleavers are very similar in thickness, but the number one is about a uh, half inch longer and probably a good solid inch or so, maybe a little more than an inch deeper than the number three and weighs about twice as much. So I'm going to set the number three aside. So um, I spent some time today cleaning this one up, taking the old rust and stuff and irregular scratches off it, putting a nice new finish on this and uh, uh, pardon my itchy nose and then I uh, spent a bit of time rubbing it down with some vinegar just to really get the blade clean and uh, get a little tiny 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 bit of patina start on on it and uh, I'm going to sharpen this tonight and so without further ado uh, this thing is uh, it does the edge is not damaged, but it is dull, so I just want to show you, when I say it's dull, it's dull, okay? One little speck on there grabbed the paper, but we'll soon see that it will get a lot better. So, my number three cleaver, it's, you know, uh, I sharpen a little more like a chef's knife. This is a little, you know, taller, heavier one. I'm actually going to sharpen this one at a little higher angle. So my number three cleaver I sharpen at a nice, you know, roughly 15 degree angle or so. Typical, uh, like a, sh you know, chef knife type angle. This one I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to do like a, around a 20 degrees. This one's going to be more of a chopper. So, how to find a 20 degree angle for sharpening. It's pretty easy. Here's 90. Half of that is 45, right? 45 degree angle, half of that is approximately 22, and then just a little lower, and we get about 20 degrees. So that's going to be the angle that I'm going to try to use, and I'm starting with my uh, Venive Dragon uh, 240 grit resin bonded diamond stone, and uh, let's go to town. I think this edge is not in too horrible shape, and I think this uh, Venive Dragon will will make fairly short work of rebeveling this thing. If I end up being wrong, then this may be two videos. One of me, in fact, let's see. I'm going to know in about two seconds. No, I'm putting it, all right. So let's flip this over and go a little coarser side, but we're going to be here for a while. The 100 grit side, and this is just, just to get the old shoulder seal out of the way, and get it to, okay, I'm already starting to feel a little burr there, so that's good. Making a new bevel, I can see it. Very nice, very nice. Now I find when, um, <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm already starting to feel it. Okay, great. So it's not in too bad a shape. I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of a low spot here and heel. Do that. I find it's a good idea when you're grinding a new bevel on a very dull edge with a very coarse stone uh, to make sure that your bevel ends up being pretty centered in the blade it's a good idea to not wait necessarily until you raise the burr to flip the knife 
to do a pass or two on each side. Do a pass or two on each side. And meet in the middle. Just keep flipping it. Let's do another one on this side. Let's see, check my angle. Pardon me while I readjust my brick here. I got it in a wobbly spot and it's clanking. Alright. That's much better. Okay, starting to get a little a little fold over here. So the heels, let's see. Oh yeah, we got a little work to do in heel. So I'm gonna do a little heel work on this side. I can see it's gonna take a little extra work there. The idea here with this very, very coarse resin modded diamond stone is just to get all the extra steel out of the way. Oh, that's actually, uh, we're already almost there. So, very good. Now let's do a complete pass for evenness and then we'll flip it again. And as soon as I start to feel the edges coming together, I'm going to get off this 100 grit side, go back to the 240 side. Because I don't want to make, I don't want to make this edge too chippy. Alright, so the heels, well, the heels being a little stubborn. It's pretty typical in, you know, for older knives, pretty typical for the heels to be worn down. People do a lot of hard chopping with the heel, it tends to get dull and rolled over a little more. Alright, there we got it. Got it on that side. I'll do another pass or two on the left side on this, and we'll flip it back over to the uh, 240 side. Alright, it's my angle, roughly. I tend to, uh, I'm fairly new to switch hand sharpening, and my biggest flaw on this side of the knife, when I hold the knife on my left hand, is to let, to let the angle lay over, so I'm going to try not to do that. Got to really keep my wrist locked. That's pretty good. Time to go back to the 240 side now. So refine this up a little bit and then I'll go on the uh, 400 grit ceramic just to refine this. And then on to 1000, 4000 and a little strapping and we'll cut test and see how I do. Very nice. Have a nice burr all the way down on that side now. Now I don't know if you can. The the resin of the diamond plate does not leave, the diamond stone does not leave as shiny a finish as a diamond plate does. It cuts much more like a ceramic whetstone, and so it has a much smoother feel than a diamond plate. And you remove steel, they remove steel very aggressively, but they cut much more like a traditional whetstone. Alright. Doing well, there's a thick spot. Still having a little stubbornness right here in the heel, so I'm gonna spend a little more time making sure 
that I don't allow my angle to dip down and waste my efforts by grinding too high on the shoulder of the bubble. And basically there, except for, I don't know if you can see, you see this? I don't know if maybe the blade got a little bent or something, but this is a very thick spot. You can see how thick uh, the shiny bevel is right there compared to a couple inches further up. So that's basically what I'm wrestling with right at the moment, is that little thick spot. And as soon as I apex there, we're done and we can move on to the ceramic whetstones. Alright, feels like it's basically there at this point. Yeah, there's a, there were either some uh, little uh, lumpy lumps in the grind there, or the blade may have gotten a little deformed at some point in its long life. Okay, I'm going to set the Veneve Dragon aside. I have here my uh, 400 grit water stone. And I'm going to just slurry it up a tiny bit with a diamond plate. This is a very, very hard 400 grit and uh, it benefits from being slurried up just a hair. Okay. I don't know why this is... Excuse me one second. See, uh, my my setup here is very simple. I have a damp towel. I have a red brick, and I have another damp towel. And this works very well for me. And uh, for some reason, my brick was wobbling, and I think by flipping it over there, I think I solved the problem. So, let's get back to this. Very distracting to hear thump, 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 and feel it with every stroke of a blade. This is much better. One of these days I'm going to invest in a fancy sink bridge. Alright, that's feeling very nice. Very nice indeed. Let's see. Now when I get to the next stone, I'm going to show, right now I'm showing kind of a sort of a typical way that one might sharpen a cleaver holding it, you know, at kind of a 45 degree angle of stone that is. The stone's like this, the blade's kind of like this, and you go like this, and it keeps a lot of the edge on the stone at, at one time. And, uh, this technique with, with the edge of the knife facing toward you as you work the knife across the stone at approximately a 45 degree angle, uh, it works very well for many, many knife shapes. And uh, Okay, good. One more pass on each side. And then when I uh, switch to the thousand grit, I'm going to show you an alternative version of this that some people use, some sharpeners use uh, for all blade shapes, and others just use for certain ones. And um, what I'm going to show you is sort of the opposite of what I'm actually doing right now, but it can be a very uh, viable technique for cleaver shaped blades, and especially meat cleavers that are very thick and need a very uh, convex edge on them. Okay, this feeling pretty good now. Check for burr all the way down. 
Uh, and just a tiny bit more up here in the tip. All right. Let's put the 400 stone aside. There's different, there's different schools of thought about sharpening when you're switching the sides of the blade. And uh, I'm going to go to the thousand grit stone now. I would say the, <clears throat> the majority of sharpeners who are right handed always hold the handle of the knife in their right hand is to sharpen. And so when they sharpen the right side of the knife, the edge faces toward them and they work it like this on the stone. But then, some sharpeners then switch to the left hand and basically do the mirror image. But many others, perhaps a majority of sharpeners, keep the blade in the right hand but flip it over this way and sharpen with the edge facing away from them and do this motion. And I did, I did this myself for quite a long time and I still do it with some blades. Um, but I have converted myself to switching hands for a few reasons, the majority of which has to do with not with getting better results necessarily, but with um, evening the wear on my whetstones. Because when you sharpen when you keep the knife in the same hand and you're always doing sort of the same shape of motion but just flipping the blade over, um, you tend to wear the same pattern in your stone over and over again. Got a nice spur there. But I'm going to go ahead and do another pass. And what some sharpeners do, particularly with tall, wide, fairly straight edge cleaver style blades like this, is they actually reverse the thing. So they'll do, they'll keep the blade facing away from them like this, and then they'll flip the blade over, and again, keep the blade facing away from them and do it this way, right? And uh, I've seen there's some, uh, a few very, very good sharpeners out there who do that style of sharpening with the edge facing away from them and switching hands, basically the opposite of what most hand switchers do, and they do that on all their knives and get good results. Um, I'm not as experienced with the, the left hand holding blade ahead. I've experimented with basically anything that one hand can do. <laughs> and mirror imaging and all of that and then I have my sort of my pet ways that I do things as we all do as it boils down to muscle memory so now that I've sort of demonstrated that I'm going to uh, sort of go back to doing this the way that I'm familiar with because I want to make sure I get this sharp. <clears throat> so while I don't think that my demonstration harmed my new edge in any way, I want to make sure that I get this just right. Okay, I need a little little more on the side. It was so hard to learn to switch hands. I can tell you that uh, it was a big learning curve, but 
actually these uh, Chinese chef knives are pretty good knives to uh, sort of practice this hand switching on because they're so wide and makes them kind of a little bit easier to to hold your angles and all that. All right. I'm going to call that good and move on to the final stone, 4,000 grit. Just put a little refinement on this and then let's drop it and see how I did. Probably not going to be my best edge ever because of all the uh, technique switching, but I did want to sort of demonstrate that. So this is my, uh, that last stone was the uh, Swear Hero the Bottle 1000 and this is the the Bato 4000. These are, I love these stones. These Tabatos are just, just so good. So typical for the, the right sides of these knives to be so easy to sharpen and the left sides to be so hard and I don't know why that is. It doesn't seem to matter what particular technique I'm using. It just seems like many knife makers grind the, the right sides of knives better than they grind the left sides of knives. And that makes them <clears throat> easier to put an even, clean, effective and nice looking bevel on the right side of the knife and get an easy apex with an easy, nice, even looking, nice, even looking uh, bevel. Although, yeah, I mean, I'll probably get this, <clears throat> I might get this bevel shiny enough that you can actually see the the vast difference in evenness from one side to the other and it's not you know I'm basically doing exactly almost exactly the same thing on both sides of the knife it's not like it's not like my technique is yeah you know switching hands is a little difference but I'm basically I've had enough practice at this hand switching now that my technique is pretty darn similar. Pressure, I've spent time making sure that I get all my fingers kind of mirror imaged. All right, it feels pretty good. Well, let's deburr this thing and see how I did. I prefer not to switch hands for for the stropping. I don't do it on the leather and I prefer not to do it on the stones either. And I will tell you when you're doing this kind of thing whether on the stones or on the leather if you have your leather strop stationary on a ben on your bench, your work surface. Whichever hand you're holding the blade in, you take that foot, okay, take that foot and put it back. Get your body out of the way a little bit. It opens up the space here and it makes it so much easier. You see how my arm has room to go back here past my body. Okay, if I stand here with my feet even and I try to do the same thing, watch what I gotta do. So there's one way. And I gotta start dancing around, okay? There's no need to dance around. Put your, whichever hand is holding your knife, when you go to, whether you're, you're deburring on the stone or stopping, Whichever hand is holding the knife, 
get that foot back out of the way okay get your body out of the way give your make it so you can just do this stuff with no interference you still have your chest your head your center is over your stone look at this I don't have to move I'm not my body isn't moving one millimeter and I can just run this thing back and forth on the stone okay got my angle don't have to change anything okay that should be pretty good or not to be honest with you I haven't been sharpening much lately I've had a lot of things going on seasons of life and all that but I'm getting back into it and uh, I'm a little bit out of practice to be honest with you so this is this is sort of a uh, part of my road back all right let us let me dry this just a little better and let's see if I have a a decent slicing edge on this before stropping see how I did off the 4000 grit okay not horrible. Okay. So, let me get uh, this wet stuff out of the way here. Dry the counter. So this is uh, smooth leather with a, some diamond emulsion on it. Rex. Someday I'm going to have a sharpening space without overhanging obstacles. So just do a, just a few. This is all being done with very little pressure here. Right about at the sharpening angle on this hard leather. This diamond emulsion cuts pretty aggressively, so if you raise your angle, it, it will kind of extra edge a little bit. But it is really great for for very hard steels that don't need you know that just need a good just a nice hard leather cleanup, polishing the teeth on the edge and nothing else. Very good for that. So I think this is going to be shiny enough after I finish dropping that you'll be able to see what I was talking about about the unevenness. All right, a bit on the soft leather now. The soft leather. It's the leather. As you go through it with the edge, it will kind of dimple and raise up behind the edge like this. So you can keep your angle a little lower with soft leather, okay? The fibers of the leather will, basically you're putting your pressure up higher on the shoulder of the bevel. The fibers of the leather will trail up uh, behind your edge and do the job that they need to do, and they'll do that without rolling your edge over. So I'm actually doing this soft leather stropping at a very slightly lower angle. And this, my particular soft leather strop just has some standard green compound on it and I find that that works very well for most of my needs. Okay, let's call that good for now. Just trying to keep this under half hour and we're right about there. So, uh, bring the, my light source in a little closer and I want to do all the, see if I can show you, um, let's see if I can catch this. Perhaps you can see here that the 
especially right in here, this, the bevel is a little unevenly shaped and that's because of lumpiness in the knife. But over on this side, it is, uh, let's see, catch it. Gosh, I'm, I'm so bad at this uh, catching the bevel and the light discipline. Someday I'll figure this out. Maybe you can kind of see. It's very, very even on the right side, but on the left side, not so much. All right, now let's cut test and see how I did. Get your stropping, you should have a very clean edge now. It's, it's marginal, I might need some more. Ooh, there's a little chipping left. Whoops, okay. Well, out here's pretty good. So, I got, there's a little low spot here that didn't get quite fully polished, and that's what happened. So, out, out in front of that, so I'll say about the last two thirds of the blade is uh, shaving sharp, but there's, there's one little spot in there that I didn't fully get. So, this is very, 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 very sharp out here. This paper is, very difficult to push cut across the grain and most of this edge is doing it nicely. So with that, I'm gonna sign off for now and uh, y'all have a great evening. Hope you found some of this informative. And if not, oh well, happy sharpening anyway. Catch you later, bye bye.